Hi, remember when you started using Emacs and you decided to open up a script without an extension? We've all done that one, of course. The contents of the script showed up without any syntax coloring. That's fundamental. So you looked up how to tell Emacs to color your code and probably found it on Stack Overflow, but you should run shell mode or something like that. And it worked. But what's the mood anyway? And how does it work? Well, we'll be looking into major modes today. So hop in with me and let's see what a major mode is. So, major modes are basically Emacs programs that come with their own rules for syntax highlighting and indentation. They also define a bunch of key binding that we can use to make the user experience more useful. Here, we have the simplest expression of a major mode. <coughs> the macro define derived mode is the go-to way to define your own major mode. As the name implies, this requires choosing a base mode. Of course, it's possible to define your own mode from scratch, but that's way too much work. So you really should follow the manual's advice and extend another mode instead. So here, in this very brief declaration, we can see that we are extending prog mode. If we invoke the help, this, we can see that this is a really super basic mode for editing code. But probably what you want to extend if you're making your own programming language. All right, so let's see if we can make a useful major mode. We'll make a super simple major mode to interact with meta meteorological strings. Meta is a real world format used to communicate meteorological data by things like airports and pilots can actually make sense of them without a computer. Here's an example of a meta string. We'd really like to have some syntax highlighting and maybe have a way to look up the airflow name. So we'll use that piece of code to define a meta mode. Okay, I'm going to evaluate this. And now we've loaded meta mode. I can try putting this buffer in meta mode. And we can see that it gets set. But it doesn't do anything yet. We need to define font log rules so Emacs will know what to color. So within the main body of define derived mode, we'll set some font log defaults for the mode. The font log defaults are a bunch of, of S expressions that start with a regex, like here. We're essentially doing an association between a regex and a font log type. The param in the middle tells Emacs to stop processing in some way. I'm sure it's useful, but it's a bit too advanced for my use. If things don't work quite right for you, you can always refer to the manual, of course. So now, we have a basic mode that will colorize the meta keyword and also the airport part of the meta string. That's pretty cool, and definitely more useful than fundamental mode. But maybe we could add a bit more functionality to the mode. All right, if I, if I evaluate the mode and try switching this buffer to meta mode again, we can see we now have some syntax coloring. So that's a lot better. So the second item in the meta string is an airport identifier. It's always four letters long, and it would be great if the user didn't have to know them by heart. So I think we can add functionality to look up the current airport and display it to the user. So here's a list of major airfields in the UK. Well, I'll define it as a constant because it's not like they change very often. Here's the working function. And as you can see, it's an interactive function. So the user can invoke it with meta x if needed. And here I'm going to try it out. Meta x, meta l field at point. I've changed the code. And here it's found Gatwick Airport in the mini buffer. 
Okay, so the Meta Air Field at Point looks up the word under the cursor and finds that word in the airfield's A list. If it's found, it's then displayed in the mini buffer for the user's benefit. That's pretty good, but that's still not very convenient. So, what we'll do to end this tutorial is to add a keybind so the user can keep up with their Emacs pinky. And invoke the airfield lookup function with a simple key code. Alright, so to define key code, what we need is to add a variable with the same name as the mode. And we end it with mode map. And then it's automatically picked up by the mode. Not sure how that works out. If anyone understands it, please feel free to leave a comment. For now, I'll just say that it's magic. <clears throat> so here, we basically extend something called next part key map. That's of course a basic set of key maps. And we are adding our own to it. With I reset Ctrl C, Ctrl A to run the airfield lookup. Refresh the mode, Ctrl C, Ctrl A, Graphic Airport. I changed it to PGLL, Heathrow Airport. And here we go. The mode's actually being useful on top of providing syntax highlighting. I hope this video was useful. I know that it took a bit of work for me to write my first major mode, and there is a lot of fairly old and magic code involved. If you like this, feel free to comment or subscribe. I hope to see you soon for more Emacs tips and tricks. Bye!